Now let's have a look at a numerical on ideal vapor compression cycle. The question says a refrigerator operates between temperature limits of 30 and minus 5 degrees Celsius. The refrigerant is 0.97 dry after leaving the evaporator coil and before entering the compressor. Okay. Find the condition of the refrigerant before entering the compressor, sorry evaporator, not the compressor, before entering the evaporator and COP of the system if the temperature rise of water circulating in condenser is limited to 20 degrees Celsius, you cannot have delta T of the coolant that is the water in the condenser to go beyond 20 degrees Celsius, find out the mass flow rate of the coolant. That's the water in the condenser. Okay, so this is the property they were given to you. So you have two temperature limits, 13 minus 5. And these are the values or the property values. So this is the enthalpy table. This is the entropy table. And these are the specific heat capacity tables. This is how the cycle is running. So before you enter the, or before the vapor enters the compressor, it is 0.97 dry. So the dryness fraction at this point is 0.97. So I can write down x1 is 0.97. Okay, we need to find out the condition of the refrigerant before entering the evaporator that is 0.4. So we need to find out x4. And we also need to find out the COP of the system. And the last we have to find out the mass flow rate of the coolant that is the mass flow rate of the water which is circulating in the condenser to cool this refrigerant okay now let's find out the enthalpy at point 1 if you look at this this is not entirely saturated this is in the wet region so h1 would be equal to hf1 plus x1 into hg1 minus hf1 so put in the values so you have HF1 as this, HG1 as this, and X1 is also given to you as 0.97. Put in the values, and the value of H1 would come about to be approximately 1394 kilojoule per kg. So this is the value of H1. Okay. Now we will also find out S1. Why? Because we need to find out this temperature also and this enthalpy also okay now this is in the superheated region and this is the saturation temperature mind you okay so h2 let's find s1 first of all s1 is equal to sf1 plus x1 into sg1 minus sf1 so put in these values and the value of s1 would be 5. 264 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay, now this is equal to S2 because the compression taking place is isentropic because this is an ideal vapor compression cycle. So S2 is equal to S1. Now what is S2 equal to? This is equal to S G2 plus plus because it's in the superheated region so we will be taking the gaseous uh, enthalpy or the gas enthalpy uh, entropy and this will be cp2 into natural log of t2 by the saturation temperature okay now d2 is to be found out and this is 30 so if you put in the values sg2 it is this 4.984 cp2 is this because we are talking about the gaseous enthalpy so it will be cp g2 okay t saturation t saturation is 303 kelvin so because we know s1 is equal to s2 and this is also known to us this is also known to us this is also known to us so 
so we'll be able to find out t2 that is the temperature in the superheated range so t2 would be now 323 or i would say 329.41 kelvin so you can do the math with your scientific calculators so now you have t2 okay after finding out t2 let's find out h2 so h2 h2 is equal to hf2 hf2 plus cpg2 into t2 minus this okay so when you put in the values now you have t2 also this is already known to you cpg is also given there and hf2 is also known which is this so so this should be actually hg not hf but hg2 so this is also known to be 1466 okay so when you put in the values h2 comes about to be 1554 kilo joule per kg so now you have h2 also that is this after finding out h2 let's find out h3 this is the saturated liquid at this temperature which is this value 323.22 so hf3 h3 which is hf3 this is equal to 323.22 okay then we'll find out h4 now this is equal to h4 okay now we know h4 from h4 we can find out the dryness fraction at point 4 because we need to find out x4 okay so h4 this is equal to hf4 plus x4 into hg4 minus hf4 now this corresponds to this temperature minus 5 so hf4 is a given value 158 okay so this is 158.26 h4 is how much this much 0.22 x4 is not known to us and then you can put in hg hg is how much 1432 minus h4 which is this so when you do the calculation and find out x4 from here x4 will come out to be 0.13 so your uh you can say your refrigerant is 13% dry before entering the evaporator okay so this is the condition 0.13 and the temperature is minus 5 right now let's find out the uh, cop of the system okay now for cop i would need this refrigeration effect so the refrigeration effect is nothing but h1 h1 minus h4 minus h4 okay h1 we have already got 1394 and h4 is also there which is 323.22 okay find this out this is approximately 1070 okay kilo joule per kg now find out the work input work input would be this h2 minus h1 okay h2 is also now found out which is 1554 1554 minus h1 which is 1394 this is somewhere about 160.18 okay so when you divide these two things you get the cop So COP is 1070 upon 160. This will be approximately 6.7. So COP is approximately 6.7. Okay. Now after COP, we need to find out the mass flow rate of coolant in the condenser. Now on one side you have the refrigerant, and the other side you have the coolant, which is the water. Now the heat lost by the uh, you can say uh, refrigerant is equal to the heat gained by the water. So this much is the heat lost by the 
uh, you can say refrigerant. So Q out is equal to M into CW into this and this is equal to H2 minus H3 is equal to M into CW into delta DW. You can find this value out easily. Okay, you, you know the value of CW which is 4.18 and you know the value of delta DW which is 20 degrees Celsius in the condenser. Okay, so from this calculation you can find out this MW, M, so M, let us say W, this is equal to, this would be approximately equal to 14.7 kg per kg of refrigerant. So you need 14.7 kg of water to cool 1 kg of refrigerant by 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is how you attempt a question on vapor compression cycle. Read the question, draw the pH plot or the TS plot if required. Look at the table given to you. This will be given to you because these are the properties of the gas which is being used for the refrigeration purpose and then simply use the basic thermodynamic relations to find out enthalpy and temperature values at different locations. So this was question number one which was a question on uh, the ideal vapor compression cycle. I hope you got it. Now in the next video we look at one more question on the vapor compression cycle.